Um, but generally when I've asked like 100 people what their favorite Nerd Night presentation ever was, like 98 of them said this one, so it's been hyped up a lot. He's got a crap load of pressure on him. Um, he's very diligently moving my laptop out of the way so he has complete focus and control as if Godzilla would when he was trampling on your heads. Um, so I'll just stop there. I think we want to get right to it. So um, let's learn about Godzilla. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Thank you, CBS, for the laser pointers. <laughs> Since the 1950s, an ominous threat has loomed over the people of Earth, but I believe by developing a deeper understanding of the facts, we can help to diminish, or perhaps avoid altogether, the catastrophic impact of this deadly menace. And so, to that end, this is Godzilla, History, Biology, and Behavior of Hyperbole Therapy. encounter with Godzilla occurred in 1954 on Odo Island, a southern Japanese fishing village. It was at this time that the first serious work on the creature was done by Professor Kyohei Yamane, <laughs> who theorized that the creature was a dinosaur of the Cretaceous era, which had survived in undersea caves until disturbed and mutated by nuclear weapons tests in the Bikini Islands. He named it Gojira after a local Odo Island folk legend of a sea monster, and that name was eventually anglicized to Godzilla because that's clearly what the small, magical Asian people were trying to say. <laughs> the creature eventually reached Tokyo. <laughs> drawn, perhaps, by the hordes of Japanese people running around screaming his name. <laughs> Fortunately, Godzilla was eventually destroyed in Tokyo Bay with a prototype of an experimental weapon, the Oxygen Destroyer, which was invented by... Um, <clears throat> Daisuke Serozawa, who later destroyed the device, its designs, and himself in the process to prevent the weapon from ever being misused. Uh, in the years since its initial attack, there have been over 22 encounters with at least five different Godzilla creatures, as well as with numerous other Godzilla-class kaiju, the latest of which, which occurred during the attempted alien invasion in 2004, which I'm sure you all recall. <laughs> So some basics of Godzilla. A fully grown Godzilla can range in height from 50 to 100 meters tall. We can approximate its weight using a simple water displacement and scaling calculation. <laughs> and anywhere from 20,000 to 60,000 tons. Um, and a Godzilla can achieve a land speed of at least 120 meters. <laughs> Their water speed is thought to be equal or even greater than this velocity, given the speed at which Godzilla is able to travel between various land masses. <laughs> While for many years, and for obvious reasons, it has been extremely difficult to directly study the anatomy of Godzilla, we can morphologically infer certain details. Now, based on Professor Yamane's findings, we know that Godzilla is a dinosaur. We can extrapolate the skeletal structure of the creature by analyzing footage from the 1954 Ishoro Honda documentary. <laughs> and from this, we can safely say that it is a carnivore, as it, is, as it has large pointed teeth, and forward-facing eyes, allowing for the stereoscopic vision necessary to catch prey. Uh, more specifically, it's bipedal nature, large, deep head, short neck, and body clearly uh, illustrate that it is a form of theropod, a group which includes Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus, and a primitive theropod at that, as it has unusually long arms for a large theropod, and four fingers and toes. Now, throughout their evolution, for reasons nobody understands, theropods reduce the number of fingers and arm lengths as well. Uh, which dinosaur exactly Godzilla mutated from was a topic of some debate. There are some who believed it was the Abeliosaur Carnotaurus, and others who speculated that it was Ceratosaurus due to the row of armor plates along its back. However, in the end, Professor Yamane was proved correct when he postulated that Godzilla was derived from a transitional form, as was confirmed in 1991 upon the discovery of the post-liminarily named Godzillasaurus, <laughs> a specimen of which survived on Lagos Island and shortly thereafter was mutated into a fully grown Godzilla itself. Uh, 
Now, the initial weapons tests which created Godzilla occurred between 1946 and 1958. So, how did these surviving theropod change so rapidly and drastically? The answer lies in the phenomenon of hyperevolution. <laughs> hyperevolution is a process of rapid genetic mutation, where an individual's body is changed in a manner paralleling millions of years of natural evolution within a short span of time. Rapid physical changes can occur nearly instantaneously using a technique called molecular sliding, an ability also found in the sea cucumber. <laughs> As a result, Godzilla can evolve not only from generation to generation, but within their own lifetime, gaining speed, strength, size, and developing more advanced cognitive skills. Uh, in the following slide, you can see a number of recent examples of hyperevolution. Uh, the last of which shares a number of important characteristics with Godzilla. Uh, the key similarity increased bone, skin, and tissue density and strength is the massive regenerative abilities that both these creatures have developed. Uh, it not only helps Godzilla from collapsing into a giant puddle of flesh under its own weight, it also augments its already, already incredibly strong hide, creating a state of near invulnerability. The secret of these abilities lies in a mysterious substance in Godzilla's cells called Regenerator G1. Uh, I believe that RG1 is a mutation of the Gynococcus radiodurans bacterium, which is one of the most radioresistant organisms known to man. Not only can it withstand a thousand times more radiation than a human being, it can also survive cold, dehydration, vacuum, and acid. Each cell contains a highly condensed and protected backup copy of its nuclear DNA, allowing it to regenerate even after extensive damage. This, of course, requires an enormous amount of energy, uh, which brings us to, how does Godzilla live? <laughs> Finding enough conventional food to sustain 60,000 tons of body mass would be a nearly impossible task. Uh, but over the years, we have observed that Godzilla is able to absorb and metabolize massive amounts of radiation. Uh, and in 1996, during the battle between Godzilla and the Kaiju Destroyer, when Godzilla actually experienced full me nuclear meltdown, we learned that Godzilla's stomach has mutated for this purpose and into a new energy-producing organ, the plasma gland. Uh, <laughs> uh, this nearly inexhaustible source of energy also helps to explain why Godzilla is so large, as the two main factors that determine vertebrate size are the amount of available food, and how the creature expends energy. Uh, not only does this organ produce enough energy for Godzilla's basic metabolic needs, but excess radioactivity can be expelled through the mouth for combat or for short range flights. Uh, released through dorsal shunt, secreted destructive nuclear pulse, or uh, for simple fostering behavior when encountering other kinds. Yes. Um, <laughs> A bit about uh, Godzilla reproduction. In the past, it's adorable, right? Yeah. He will destroy you. Uh, in the past, several scientists have mistakenly theorized that Godzilla reproduced via parthenogenesis or virgin birth a method of asexual reproduction found amongst reptiles. The foremost proponent of this theory was a former colleague, Dr. Nicholas Tatopoulos. Unfortunately, it was later discovered that Dr. Tatopoulos was mistakenly studying a giant mutated iguana, and not, in fact, an actual Godzilla. <laughs> the simple fact is that, to the best of our knowledge, no scientist to date has witnessed a Godzilla mating, gestation, or birth. However, we can safely infer that Godzilla reproduces a reproduces sexually, as um, birds and reptiles, which are closely related to Godzilla, uh, to dinosaurs, produce sexually. Dinosaurs have been shown to possess medullary bones, a type of bone found in birds used to store calcium for egg production. And like birds and reptiles, the dinosaurs lay eggs in nests. And of course, Godzilla has evolved from a dinosaur. Now, a bit about Godzilla behavior. Uh, since the first appearance of Godzilla, we have seen the evolution of not just its physical form, but its behavioral and social patterns as well. Whereas the first Godzilla was a pure force of destruction, later incarnations have learned to interact not only with other kaiju, 
but also with humans to a degree. This increased social behavior has worked to Earth's advantage on numerous occasions, particularly when being invaded by aliens, as occurred in 1964, 1965, 68, 71, 74, 75, 91, 94, 2000, and of course, 2004. Um, so what are we to do? Uh, Despite the ser serendipitous occasion where Godzilla has helped mankind, you should, under no circumstances, expect this to be the norm. The following are several do's and don'ts to help you avoid, and if necessary, survive an encounter with Godzilla. Uh, number one, don't live in Japan. <laughs> this is the first and best step you can take towards Godzilla prevention. Japan is the primary stopping grounds for Godzilla and other kaiju, most notably, most probably due to its proximity to uh, Monster Island. <laughs> also, the Japanese government always invariably attacks Godzilla, which never fails to just make him angry. <laughs> On a related note, speaking of Monster Island, we should encourage all governments in the future to stop blowing things up next to Monster Island. <laughs> for help. <laughs> While most kaiju are indifferent towards human beings, the inhabitants of Infant Island, the show region, have uh, over the generations established a rapport with Mothra. And Mothra is, of course, the only kaiju who has consistently the um, consistently, consistently, that's a difficult word, <laughs> consistently been able to subdue guns. Uh, number three, don't shoot at Godzilla. You will fail and again make him angry. Uh, number four, do keep it cool with a weather control machine or freeze ray. Godzilla has proven susceptible to extreme cold. It will not kill him, but it can place him in a state of extended hibernation. This is of course a temporary fix, as he will inevitably be woken up by a random nuclear explosion. <laughs> or aliens. <laughs> Speaking of which, don't trade Godzilla to aliens. <laughs> they may offer the universal cure to all diseases and future technology, but they will always end up trying to use Godzilla to destroy us. <laughs> aliens cannot be trusted. <laughs> while you were doing it, Godzilla can hear you. So, in conclusion, just remember that while you may be afraid of Godzilla, Godzilla is not even remotely afraid of you. So while you may feel the instinct to stop and stare at Godzilla or any other charismatic mega kaiju you may encounter, don't. Get out. Now, I realize that's a lot of information, so I'd like to leave you with a little song I put together to help you all remember. <laughs> Stories. I'm breathing fire. His head in the sky. 
sky. From the Cretaceous era he arrived, in some deep sea caves my boy survived. Woken up by the hydrogen bomb, he's like both world wars, plus Vietnam. He'll level your city, he'll demolish your towns. Any monster tries to mash up, he will surely take them down. <laughs> He's a force of nature, he's completely immune to your guns, tanks, and bombs, and your modern jet fighters, to your hack directors, and your bad screenwriters. Godzilla's mad sick, he ain't no pregnant chick. What the hell's the matter with you, Matthew Broderick? You know, that movie came out 12 years ago. But when it gets cold, like it is today, I still feel the pain right here. Even when he's beaten, you know he's coming back. No oxygen destroyer is gonna change the fact. From Megalon to Gamera, Kumonga and Hadora, to Ghidorah and Gigan, the kings of Sayonara. Don't matter what you say, this player's gotta play. So wait for 90 minutes and my boy will swim away. Where he came from, where there is no sun, you just better run. Gotta get me some Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla. King Kong. No, no, no. King Kong's only 50 feet tall, son. No way. So um, you said that he, he, uh, he mutates very quickly. Um, tell me about uh, how Godzilla would do with preventing himself from getting cancer. Well, it's interesting. Godzilla is, in fact, sort of one giant cancer. Like, like the Hulk, his cells multiply and mutate at such an alarming rate that it's impossible for any uh, other force to keep up with it and destroy it. So, yes. Expand on that. Expand on that. <laughs> Are you sure? Can Godzilla get cancer? I think I'm going to agree with Sean on this one, actually. That he is already cancerous, and he can control it to his own advantage. Well, my fellow, fellow fake scientists agree with me, so... <laughs> uh, uh, should, are there any other questions? Why are you so awesome? <laughs> to Godzilla to measure his density. Um, as uh, crocodiles are similar to dinosaurs, theoretically, in their body density, that's the density we use for the scaling calculation in the lab. Uh, 